had some grinding gearbox sounds and apparently it's quite common with some bearings going bad after some googling I did find some guy who covered it really well here, here on YouTube I'm just gonna link to his uh, playlist where he messes with the Skoda I'm just gonna add a few things uh, that I did differently here I removed the starter rather than have it hanging from uh, the wiring be in the way. It's just one extra wire to actually have it removed. I needed a thin down 13 millimeter to to remove it. I also removed the hood because I didn't have access to a fancy engine hoist thing as he had. And with the hood out of the way, a couple of simple wooden stands could be placed on either side and a beam across. And I used my trusty chain blocks as I've used previously in many of my videos and uh, they could be used to, to hold the, the engine and the, the gearbox and, and help when lowering things down. It was not captured on video but he removes both lower ball joints on the control arms or I'm not sure what they're called, uh, the suspension arms in the front. Uh, there is no need to, at least not on my uh, engine, the diesel, he, he works on the petrol I think, but I guess it's the same, you, don't, you just need to undo the drive shaft and you can kind of fold that up uh, higher and get that out of the way enough to get the gearbox out, no need to, to undo more than the the drive shaft next to the gearbox on the right side on the left side you need to uh, undo the suspension strut but i think it removes the steering linkage also or something that's not needed if you just uh, take off the three bolts below for the uh, a arm the the suspension arm and get that lower ball joint you get enough clearance to to swing out things enough to get the gearbox out and here are the two failing bearings he ended up having a press and everything I ended up uh, just using a grinder eventually uh, we did try pulling it off here you can see the kind of pulling setup we had tried pulling on that plate but the, the kind of bracket that holds the two bearings together is way too weak the the corners just bend and so on so it was easiest to just we actually cut the middle of the bearings and uh, then you could kind of bend them apart a little and we hammered out uh, one of the bearings where the smaller sprocket is next to the bearing and then the other side i ended up sitting down with the grinder for a little bit and chipping away at it and at the end uh, making a small slit with a dremel tool and could crack the inner bearing race had things wrapped in just uh, some rags when we started attacking it with the grinder to the remove r reduce any dust from that getting onto the sprockets and into the different pieces on the shafts we split open the inner bearing races and used them as uh, like drives or uh, support for driving on the new bearings rather than hammering on the socket directly on the new bearing at least using the old inner races uh, you have the same exactly same surface area and you impact the entire size of the new bearings and that worked great we had some spacers made up to because the offset for the different length of shafts and once the new bearings were seated firmly and all the gear selectors and everything there is uh, like an extra sprocket held in place outside of the two main shafts that's for the reverse gear and I don't think it covered it super well that uh, there is kind of a fork that uh, has to go around the reverse sprocket but maybe that's general knowledge if you're going this deep into a gearbox uh, but it could be easy to miss something here because it tends to fall apart when you lift things out so that might be something worth uh, being careful about if you do find my video before any others since watch this first if you have gear gearbox problems I think they use the same gearbox in many Volkswagens, uh, Audis 
uh, and Skodas. Uh, it's, I think this is a very common gearbox design. I'm not sure how similar this five speed unit is compared to others. From what I found out, there might be two different sizes of gearboxes. I have the big 1.9 diesel engine, but it's no turbocharger, so low power and small gearbox and small clutch. And since I was this deep in, I also invested in a new clutch friction and pressure plate and had that installed because it's quite a lot of work to get the gearbox out so better just do this now and hope it will never be needed again. It wasn't super worn or anything and could probably have lasted a lot longer but when doing all this it's probably worth taking that little extra cost. The video I will be linking to today are quite long and so on, I'm not sure if I missed it, but I had trouble getting kind of the trumpets that go into the differentials that hook up to the drive shafts. They are kind of spring loaded uh, to, to account for the length difference in length of the drive shaft as the suspension works. And uh, you have to kind of push them in a little to, to get the bolt holding them in place. But I just used some wooden pieces and a, and a clamp to, to push it in enough to get the, the bolt to grab. And the gearbox is on its way in. Uh, as I said, check the link in the description for a lot more detailed videos of someone else doing this job. I'm not, I haven't recorded enough video footage to do a detailed video and I don't see a point of doing it because it will just repeat things that are already available. I'd rather focus on the forest machines and things like that and do more detailed videos or at least better videos about that. But if you do find this video and because you're searching for the Skoda gearbox problem, uh, I have a few, few little things here that might help out. And I hope it helps someone out. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Oh, found one little more thing that might help out. I started uh, putting the drive shaft back into place without realizing that this uh, ball joint thing at the bottom needs to kind of slide into the uh, inside of this uh, control arm. Or is it called bearing arm? Whatever needs to slide into it and here it's below it so I had to start letting go of the drive shaft and kind of start bending that down and being able to get it to slot into where it should be. Another good helpful tip that might have been covered in the other guy's video also but well I'm calling it here. Thanks. Oh, really sorry, but I see one more thing here. The green lid at the bottom left here, that's the power steering reservoir. And you can only access that when you have removed the battery tray. So if you have that out, might be worth checking the level. Mine was a little low. I'm not sure exactly what fluid it takes, but I added some fork oil from a motorcycle. I hope that's good enough to keep it working for a little longer. Or who knows? We'll see.